It's that season, everyone. The leaves are turning beautiful colors. Oh my gosh, are they ever. And they're falling off the trees. And you all know how very important this leaf litter is. It's not trash. It is one of the biggest gifts of the planet. And so I just thought I'd remind you what we do with the leaves. And then also fess up to a big mistake we made. So we are west of our house. If you've watched our videos for a while, you've seen this. And this is an area that we maintain as lawn. And then to the north of the house, we also maintain that as lawn because that's visible from the road. And according to our county zoning, we have to have some mowing. And so we do. And so that all of this then looks intentional. There's the road. So folks can look around and they see, hmm, I mean, we might be kind of those wacky people with plants growing everywhere, but it, it's intentional. So there's that. <laughs> And so I guess our intention is to create as much habitat as possible. But you can see what I did last night was I felt like needing, I needed some movement. We'd been sitting and in the sunshine and watching all of the vultures migrating over and a monarch. And it just got beyond a point to where my body said, okay, girl, time to get moving. I do better when I have really long fluid type motions one thing my body usually rejects is bending over and stooping it just doesn't feel good but nice long fluid motions awesome and activity is great for my brain so i thought i'm going to just rake some leaves and that's where i am going to tell you the mistake that we made so we usually always rake leaves if we need to, oftentimes we don't need to because they might fall and then be in that place for a little while. But the wind moves around leaves so very much that if we just wait a few days, they usually blow into the beds themselves. And so that makes it really easy for us. But there was a big thick layer out here and it was really nice and we thought this will be a good day for Steve to mow this back area and then bag up the leaves and just dump them into the beds. Well, of course, the mower is a mulching mower and we have had right up here in this path for probably a month, a wood frog that's been living here. And you can guess where this is going. Yes. We managed to together somehow make that wood frog get mowed and it royally sucked. So I was working behind the house with a rake. He was out here. The frog probably got cornered. I mean, wood frogs, if you look at them, really turn the color of maple leaves in the fall. And so right by our chairs, I just found the frog clearly been mowed and that was pretty devastating so it was also unnecessary what we did there and the rake has always worked best i used to be a steward at a nature preserve in fort wayne and on leaves pickup i didn't usually use a mower but i would use a leaf blower and then i looked around at all the visitors that were coming and i'm out there with this crazy loud leaf blower and they had come for respite and to enjoy fall and I thought, this is no good. So I just started using a rake. And yes, rake is a little bit more laborious, but it's so quiet and you don't chop up wood frogs. And remember I told you already, I stopped using a weed whip, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago after I chopped up a snake. So just be mindful of the equipment that you're using for your own peace, other people's peace, and of course the lives of all of the critters you are trying to give homes to. So I just came out with that rake, a bunch more has come down, and I just raked them along the edge. We're 
just kind of expanding this bed right here. The biggest help and the best piece of advice, and we've already shared it, but is look at your le at your trees and make the leaf line, the tree line, the edge line, whatever you want to call this, the limb line, <laughs> the drip line of the trees, make that the edge of your bed. And then a lot of the leaves will just fall in place. And if you have a wind that day, like we've had lately, pretty strong out of the south, they're going to blow out of it. But you can rake some of those to the edge and don't freak out about the thickness. They reduce in volume by a tremendous amount. Maple leaves go away so quick. By spring, there won't be any. And that's always kind of shocking. And then these leaves that are newly on the lawn, they're blowing into the old field vegetation right there, all those golden rods and cut plants. And then all of the luna moths and the butterflies and anybody really you can think of frogs toads turtles innumerable insects they have their overwintering place to be safe and the plants have a really lovely mulch on top to keep moisture in and then the nutrients are recycled into the earth and i'm going to show you one document that you may want to look for And then also just say thank you for being mindful of your leaves. So here we go. Xerxes Society rules. We love them. They're a nonprofit and they just have so many great resources for invertebrates. So this is nesting and overwintering habitat for pollinators and other beneficial insects. And I haven't read the whole thing yet. They definitely have a leave the leaves section, plus how to trim your plants and create bee nesting opportunities. So I will make sure to put a link to that in the description. And with that, I'm going to say, enjoy the leaves, enjoy these beautiful days, and we will check in with you next week.